Hello, I'm Frank Jackson. I'm a gastroenterologist. Crohn's disease is a topic of this video. You probably do not have this disorder, but I bet you know someone, perhaps one of your relatives, who does. Please pass this video along. Crohn's disease is an inflammation of the lowest part of the small bowel and the colon. It can spread to the entire colon and even other parts of the intestine. Dysbiosis, what a terrible sounding word. However, it means just one simple thing. You have a bad mix of bacteria in the gut. If you have Crohn's disease, you almost certainly have this unwanted collection of awful bacteria in your colon. These bad bacteria cause some unhealthy things to occur. The presence of these bad bacteria in the intestine is dysbiosis. Remember this word. So what causes Crohn's disease? We know that genetics is important, but you can't really change your genes. A second factor is something in the diet and foods we eat. We know, for instance, if you put the bowel at complete rest, no food at all, then the Crohn's seems to settle down and get better. We also know that if you are eating a high vegetable and fruit diet, then you are less likely to get Crohn's in the first place. The same thing goes for those who are big meat eaters. Increased veggies and fruits and less red meat means less chance of getting Crohn's. These are facts. So what do you do if you already have Crohn's disease? Let's talk about prebiotics. Prebiotics are different from probiotics that are the bacteria you get in yogurt or pills you buy. Prebiotics are special plant fibers found only in certain vegetables and some fruit. Here is how prebiotics work. As I've noted, the lower gut is filled with enormous numbers of bacteria, some good and some not so good. The best bacteria are stimulated to grow in a very rapid manner, dividing and reproducing every 20 minutes. While they are doing this, they are producing energy pods, medically called short-chain fatty acids. These energy pods enrich the colon wall and make it much healthier. The bad bacteria have fewer places to grow, which means less dysbiosis. Prebiotics are the fibers and bacteria, the bacteria food that make this happen. Now let's talk about food additives and especially emulsifiers. Believe it or not, the food industry has over 10,000 food additives they can and do put into prepared, bottled, and packaged foods. You heard that right. These prepared foods may have an enormous number of additives in them. In fact, the rise in the incidence of Crohn's disease parallels the rising number of food additives in our diet. But more important than this may be the emulsifier additives. Emulsifiers are everywhere. They are used to blend water and oil, as in almost all salad dressings and ice cream. Here are some of the emulsifiers found in many foods. Xanthan gum, gum arabic, guar gum, polysorbates, lecithins from eggs, HPMC or hydromellose, carboxymethyl cellulose. These substances are everywhere and in almost every prepared food. They are even blended into some pills that you may take for Crohn's disease. So read the labels. If you don't recognize a word, suspect it is an emulsifier and don't buy it. Why shouldn't you buy it? Because it is very likely that these substances emulsify and destroy the protective mucus layer in the lower intestine and colon. The mucus layer is a vitally important barrier to keep bacteria away from the intestine itself. This has been shown to occur in animal experiments where emulsifiers were fed to animals. The protective mucus layer was destroyed and the animal developed a Crohn's-like inflammation of the intestine. So emulsifiers may be very bad for Crohn's patients. The federal FDA knew nothing about emulsifiers and Crohn's disease when they approved these hundreds of emulsifiers so many years ago. So trust your eyes when you read food labels. If you do not recognize a word, assume it is an emulsifier. So here is the bottom line for the dietary management of Crohn's disease. One, stay in close contact with your physician or gastroenterologist and follow their advice. Two, you probably 
have dysbiosis, a bad mix of gut bacteria, you can change it. Three, increase your intake of vegetables and fresh fruit, especially the ones that contain prebiotics. Go to jacksongi.com to get the list. That is jacksongi.com. There you will find a lengthy booklet I wrote on the dietary treatment of Crohn's disease. Download it and read it twice. It is free. Four, avoid prepared foods to the extent you can. In particular, learn the names of emulsifiers and avoid them. Read food labels carefully. Five, take prebiotics such as our prebiotin supplement. Get rid of your dysbiosis. Best wishes for a healthy digestive system from your good gut friend, Dr. Frank Jackson.